This isn't all about whether you're nuts or not, like we said before. It's about finding what has caused how you're feeling now and creating a working solution. In order to achieve that, I need to get to know you better. Can we talk about your childhood first? Your parents. When you're a child, your life revolves around them. What was your father like? Did you have a good relationship with him? No, he wasn't a good father to me. He was a cold, scary man, had this wall around him. I could never talk to him about anything. He wouldn't understand. He'd just punish me instead. Maybe it's his fault I got some wires crossed in my head, because he never loved me. I've always wondered what it feels like to have a loving dad. Maybe it's not too late to fix things between you two. It is. He's dead. Cancer. Six years ago. I see. But it isn't too late for you to put things right in your heart. Have you forgiven him? Why would I? He doesn't deserve to be forgiven. All he did was make my life hell. He destroyed my childhood. He always made me sad. Yes, sad is the word. It's all true, Susan. But the anger you have kept in your heart all these years isn't doing you any good. Don't you think you would be a better, stronger person if you could rise above it all? Aren't you becoming a bit like him, angry and bitter? Aren't those the things in him you hated most? My mind is already made up. I will never forgive that son of a bitch. I hope he burns in hell. Well, if you put it like that... Let's talk about your mother now. What was she like? Would you care to tell me about her? I lost her when I was still a child. So you were brought up by a single dad. What happened to your mother? She... committed suicide. One night, my parents had this horrible fight. I listened to it while lying in bed, forcing myself to go to sleep. It went on forever. And then, all of a sudden, there was silence. I kept hoping everything was okay, but I still couldn't sleep. I had this feeling, you know, that something wasn't right. And then, I heard this horrible bang that echoed through the house. I got up. My legs felt like rubber. I went to the living room and saw the cellar door was wide open. For some reason, I already knew what happened. I just didn't want to believe it. We had a gun in the house. A rifle. It was in a box on top of the wardrobe, so I couldn't reach it. I wasn't even supposed to know about it, but I did. And at that moment, as I stood there on top of the stairs, I knew it was the rifle that fired. My father came out of the cellar. He looked like a ghost. Then he said something he would regret forever. He said, go and see what your mummy did. I could see tears rolling down his face. I stood there, paralyzed, and he shouted at me and said, just look at your fucking mother, will you? So I did. I never should have listened to him. I still see her today when I close my eyes. You certainly had a very traumatic childhood, Susan. I'm sorry. I can only try to understand what it feels like to lose a parent. But it's clear to me that your problems are rooted deep in your childhood. That's enough about your parents for now. Let's take two minutes 
and we will talk about something else. I need to get out of this place. I hate hospitals. Besides, I really want to go home and forget all about this. Hello? I guess I should wait my turn. I'd like to go home now. Well, so would I. But there are procedures and a system in place. I can't just let you go like that. What? Look, I'm very busy at the moment. I'll come and talk to you in a minute, all right? Is Liz here? And who's Liz? That young nurse who was here last night. Black hair, very chatty. She said her name was Liz. I'm, I'm sorry, a lot of people come through here. I can't remember everyone's name. Can you return to your bed now, please? It's nearly time for your medication. I can't be chasing around after every single patient. Beg your pardon? Look, I'm very busy at the moment. I'll come and talk to you in a minute, all right? Please do not touch these. They are all confidential documents. Yeah? Well, maybe you shouldn't leave them out on the desk for everyone to see. If you are looking for something to read, we have some magazines for patients here. Thanks, but I think I'll pass. Excuse me, where's the exit? It's just down the corridor, ma'am. Thanks, I'll be on my way then. Can I see the discharge letter first? A discharge letter? What for? Some of our patients are under observation and aren't allowed out of the ward. For their own safety, of course. It sounds like we're prisoners here. It's for the patient's safety, ma'am. If you haven't been discharged by the doctors, I'm afraid I can't let you through. May I ask what your name is? My name is... Mary Smith. Let me through, please. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do for you, ma'am. 
You should talk to the doctor first and come back with a letter and some form of identification. Hi, are you all right? Can we talk for a minute? I can't talk. Please, just leave me alone. Oh, I mean you no harm. I'm trapped here, just like you. Trapped? I don't know. It's just so hard to think without it. But you're a stranger. And you're not one of those lovely nurses either. They look after me so well. I trust the nurses like I trusted my mother. I just want to talk. I need your help. Unless it's mother who sent you. Was it her? Please tell me it was her. Um, yeah, sure. I'm a good friend of your mother. I miss her so much. I can't remember you very well. But you should know this. If you really are a friend, you will know my mother's name. The name that haunts me. A beautiful name. Yeah, sure I do. Now, let me ask you. What is it? Oh, well... What is my mother's name? Hmm... Uh... Anne Burton. No. That's my name. You don't know my mother, you little liar. Leave me alone. Please, just leave me alone. Someone is coming. Have you rang the bell? Is there an emergency? I'm feeling a bit woozy. Are you really? You look fine to me. No, I I'm really not feeling well. Fine, I'll call the doctor for you. But I can't help it if he's busy and can't get here straight away. In the meantime, I know how to make you feel better. I think it's time we give you some medication. Can you please tell me your name and your date of birth? Susan Ashworth, 24th of May, 1970. I'm just going to check your name band now to confirm that. That's fine. That's fine. I'd like you to drink this liquid, please. It will help you relax. It will help you relax. Are you insane? I'm not taking any medication. I'm not ill. Okay, we are prepared for this. Jim, 
Can you come in, please? You must be kidding me. Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm going to give you an injection. You'll feel a sharp scratch. Hold it for me, would you? Now, go back to your room and rest. You'll be able to relax and have a great sleep. The drugs have worn off, and I feel better now. But I can't let them do that to me again. I need to get out of here. If you really are a friend, you will know my mother's name. The name that haunts me. A beautiful name. But I know it. Let me just think for a second. Sheila. Yes. It was my mother who sent you, after all. I'm sorry I didn't believe you. But my head's all messed up. So, let's have a little chat, sweetheart. Do you know how to get out of here? You're not supposed to get out. We must stay here, do what they say, take pills they give us. Sometimes, if I behave, they give me the red stuff. I wait for it, I'm being good. What is this red stuff? It's a drug, my favourite one. Red stuff takes the pain away. I must stay here. Good nurses have been most kind. They always remember, they know I'm suffering. But it is not the same as the drugs I see in my dreams. On the other side of the mirror, there's a spider's heart full of drugs. I just can't seem to find it anymore. I see. Are you all right? I'm fine. Yes, it's all fine. It's just hard to wait, you know? They said I can have it. You know, yeah? So I wait here. Don't want to miss it. That nurse promised it to me. The one with the red glasses. But I think it's been three hours already. Why are they late? Do you think something happened? Do you think she changed her mind? Because I swear if she did, I will hurt myself again. I swear to God, I will hurt myself again. I'm sure they'll be here in a minute. They're probably just very busy, that's all. Feel like sharing? What's your name? There is nothing to share. Everyone died. Everyone. And my treat, my red stuff, it's not the same. I keep lying to myself. I'm a mean little liar. Always have been. This vein, you see, 
It goes straight to my heart. That's why it hurts so much. I wish I could, just one more time. But it's all lost now. Everything. I was always happy to settle for a consolation prize, you know? What exactly is this little treat you mentioned? It's the red teardrop of pure happiness. They bring it, I drink it down, and my pain goes away. Without it, I just feel so angry. It's like I'm going crazy. <laughs> it's funny, but I just get so fucking angry sometimes. I'm dying, I think. We're all dying, I heard. She said I'd go to hell for it, but I didn't do anything. I didn't know. Does he know? Who? Him! Right. Okay. No, probably not. I need the red medicine. I need it now. I must be a good girl. I must be a nice girl. Maybe I could get you some of that stuff. Do you know where they keep it? Oh, they have it hidden well. You can't get there. Or maybe you can. I see it in my dreams sometimes. It's where the nurses are. But in my dream, there are no nurses there. I see it, but I can't get it. It's so near and yet so far. I can still hear the broken heartbeat of the spider's heart. How about we swap our name bands? Oh yeah, I don't mind. But that would be like a favour to you, yeah? Well, technically you wouldn't lose anything, because I'd give you my name band instead. Does that make any sense? Sure, yeah. I do want something better in return though. I'm not that stupid. I know you'll use it to get out of here. Oh, I never said you're stupid. I... I just really want to go home. Please understand. That's fine. I don't mind. I'll give it to you if you get me the red stuff. What do you say? I thought nurses give it to you anyway. No, not that. I'm talking about the real thing. Something you can only get in the world of dreams. Now that is something special. Is it safe? It's perfectly safe. Um, okay. I'll see what I can do. About these name bands. Oh yeah, I don't mind. We can swap our name bands as soon as you bring me the red stuff. But remember, it's hidden. You have to follow the heartbeat of the spider. It's right there, in the world of dreams, the world of nightmares. I'll talk to you later, yeah? Yes, go. Be careful, they're watching us. And remember, we must be nice to earn the red stuff. Always be nice. Poor woman. I've found the thing you asked me for, but are you absolutely certain it won't harm you? Don't be silly. Of course it won't. Fine. I hope you know what you're doing. Can I have your name band now, please? Yes. No matter what they say, I do keep my promises. What do they... You know what? It doesn't matter. Thank you for your help.
Someone is coming. Have you rang the bell? Is there an emergency? The toilet's blocked. What? Ah, oh, well, that's hardly an emergency. It is when you need to use it urgently, like I do. I see. Fine, I'll sort it out. Just give me a minute. Ah, oh, it's the gloves. Again! I guess I'll have to get my hands dirty since the cleaner's called in sick. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am, can't let you through. We'll need to see a discharge letter from your doctor first. Here. Are you happy now? Yes, that seems fine. Can I just check your name band to confirm that you are indeed Anne Burton? Oh, all right. I didn't realize you knew how to read. There you go. Can I go now? Of course. Thank you, ma'am. We'll see you soon. No, you won't. Now get out of my way. And you must be Susan Ashworth. Um, well, perhaps I am. Do you mind if I ask you where you're heading to? I was just going for a little walk, stretch my legs, get some fresh air. Give it a rest. I'm not going anywhere. Miss Ashworth, please relax. There's been a mistake. You have been prescribed wrong medication. I apologize sincerely on behalf of my team and the hospital. But luckily we managed to spot it on time. On time? You have no idea what I've been through? Once again, I'm truly sorry. I promise no more drugs will be given to you. I personally guarantee you will have a good, peaceful sleep tonight. And you can be discharged in the morning. Why can't I go tonight? I want to go now! I'm really sorry, but we can't legally discharge suicidal patients without a full psychiatric assessment. It's too late for it now, but I promise we'll have a chat in my office first thing in the morning, okay? And then you can go home. Is that all right? I haven't really got much choice, have I? Now I'd like to ask you some questions about your life, Susan. You might find them very personal, but it's important that you answer me as honestly as possible. Fine. Let's get it over with then, shall we? I'd like to go home at last. Of course, I understand. So, Susan, let's see. Are you living alone at the moment? I live on my own, and it suits me just fine. I don't need anyone. People mostly bore me. Sometimes they annoy me or upset me. I'm happy with how things are at the moment. I have my little bit of space, and it's my own. It's private. I'd like to keep it that way. What do you do for a living? I'm a waitress. I work in a cafe. You do? Do you like it? It's okay. I don't mind it. It's just a job. It's important to keep busy. I'd advise you get back to work as soon as next week. I will. Describe to me what your mornings look like. What is the first thing you do each day? I have a cup of tea and read a newspaper. Perhaps having some breakfast first would improve how you feel through the day. Just something to think about. Sure, I can try that. Would you say that you feel safer at home than outside? 
Not really. I don't feel that safe at all. How can you feel safe these days anyway? You can be living next door to a murderer who'll blow your head off for a bit of fun. Local kids have set an old man on fire the other day. They filmed him as he burned to his death. I knew this woman. She slipped on a wet bathroom floor, cracked her head open, and broke a leg. She lied there bleeding for two days, unable to move. By the time they found her, it was already too late. Susan, taking risks is a part of life. What do you think is missing in your life? Or rather, what is one thing that you think would make your life better? It would be nice to have more money, I guess. Sure, of course. Don't we all? Have you ever attended group therapy for depression or some other form of counseling? Yes, it didn't help much, as you can see. Just something to think about. I can see you're really willing to open up and talk about your issues. That's a positive sign. I... I haven't really talked about my feelings for a long time. You're doing very well so far. Do you have problems sleeping? Every night. I take pills for that. There aren't any left now, though. In the light of recent events, I think you should stay off those pills for a while. I suggest you drink some hot milk before bed instead. Would you describe for me how you feel at the moment? Definitely better than before the accident. Good. Hopefully you can now move on from here. With a bit of luck you will enjoy life again. Suicide attempts often have that effect on people. Same as near-death experience. It makes you realize that you're not ready to die yet. Do you find it hard to concentrate? Yes, sometimes. Do you drink alcohol, Susan? Only sometimes. I'd suggest you don't consume any alcohol at all for a while. Does that sound like something you can do? Yeah, sure. I'm not a big drinker anyway. Sometimes when life gets too much and people feel sad or upset, they think about suicide. Do you often think about suicide? Well... I used to think about it sometimes. Don't you think about it when you're really down? Susan, I'm a psychiatrist. My job is to talk people out of it. Would you ask a fireman if he ever thinks about setting fire to his house? I suppose not. But I'm sure lots of people have times when they do think about it. I couldn't say, Susan. The statistics show that men are three times more likely than women to commit suicide. That puts you in the minority. But of course, that's missing the point. Suicide is never the solution. There's always a way of solving whatever problem you might have. I realize that now. Please, in your own words, try to explain to me why did you really try to take your own life, Susan? was just a sudden impulse. I'm ashamed of it now. I had a really rotten day, you know? I felt like I was suffocating between the four walls of my bedroom. It just would get worse and worse. By the afternoon, I realized I cried for the past three hours. I... I didn't even know I'd been crying until I went to the bathroom and saw my face in the mirror. I looked like a ghost. I looked like I was dead already, you know? And then I saw the sleeping pills. I thought, why not? And I did it. Do you feel as if you're a burden? 
or that life isn't worth living. Not anymore. It's strange. But I feel lighter. I feel stronger. Besides, I live alone. Who could I be a burden to? What makes you feel better? Music. I play the piano when I'm feeling down. It's also a signal for the local cats that the food's there, ready for them. That's when they come over, when they hear the piano. What makes you feel worse? People. They've let me down too many times. I don't know who to trust anymore. I only trust my cats these days. So you say in the suicide note. Because that's true. I've been stabbed in the back more times than I could count. Have you imagined your funeral and how people will react to your death? Probably nobody would come anyway. Can you imagine it? Now that's a sad picture. Loved by no one. Missed only by some cats. No tears shed for me. No flowers on my grave. But that's okay. I never liked flowers. I wouldn't miss that. Finally, I'd like you to tell me about Eric. Eric? Yes, your husband. I believe this might be important. What can you tell me about your relationship? What had happened between you two? There's nothing to talk about. Hmm. Fine. I suppose you've opened enough for one day. Okay, one more question. This is just a formality, but I have to ask. Are you going to do it again? That's a hard one. I don't know. But hey, I've got it. The answer is no, I'm not. Thank you very much. Excellent. We are nearly done here. There's just one more thing I must clear with you. What exactly happened last night? Well, after I'd met you outside the ward yesterday, I went back to my room and fell asleep. I slept really well, considering what happened earlier. But then someone woke me up. It was the same nurse who was so friendly with me the first night. She said we needed to talk. We must go, Susan. You are not safe here. But... Please, you must follow me, quickly. 